And uh, you know, looking at him, I, I felt strangely. I mean, I don't don't take this the wrong way. I felt calm and peaceful while I was praying for him. You know, some other people, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is a disaster. But for, when I prayed for him, I, I didn't feel that way. And and God told you the reason we went is because the Lord told you that we should go and pray for him. And I've learned that whenever God speaks to you, that I have to listen because it's it's right. <laughs> so, um, and. Uh, he, uh, he's from uh, New Zealand, and they go to a, a, a non-charismatic church. But they used to go to a charismatic church in New Zealand. And uh, when I prayed for him, you know how I pray, it's not a whisper. <laughs> and I'm, I'm wondering how does this kind of gentle, you know, well-to-do guy handle me? <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm praying power and fire and the blood of Christ <laughs> And I'm thinking, you know, is this guy going to get freaked out or what? So I even I said, I'm sorry if I, you know, I pray so bad. He said, no, I've been waiting for somebody to pray for me like this for years. Everybody else just, you know, please get well and all of this. <laughs> so uh, and I said, well, you know, I, I kind of collide sometimes with, uh, with uh, Northern Virginians, I guess I should say, <laughs> because uh, of, of the, the culture here and the wealthy, the, the wealthy people here. It kind of deadens us, you know. So, but he pulled out a book. Um, called Radical by David Platt. I don't know if you've seen that. I didn't know anything about it. He handed it to me, and I didn't think much of it. But he said, you need to read this book. And I, I pulled it out this morning. I started reading it. It was, it was exactly everything I felt the Lord telling me I need to do in terms of ministry. So I wondered, you know, was I there for him or for me? I don't know. But <laughs> I, I got the book. And um, it just, uh, I had already planned on doing this sermon, so I put that off till next Sunday. But the fact that I had already started writing and, and thinking about um, faith, and then this came up to pray for him, I found it interesting. Um, but I knew at that moment, we have to pray believing, even though he was doubting, I was believing. And I didn't, when he asked me questions about does God always heal us and this, I didn't even answer him. That's not what we're here for. <laughs> we're here to pray and believe now that you're going to be healed. Amen. And that's Amen. the way we left it. And he, you know, he did feel encouraged. So I believe that encouragement is enough to draw and, and sharpen our faith. So thank God. You know, they've had a lot of people pray for them. and uh, But that was really blessed to go and, and deliver that message. Faith right now when you need it most, brother. And don't doubt. Anyway, that, that was what was going on before I started this. I, I've been reading a book called um, How to Walk in Supernatural Power by Guillermo Maldonado is a great church down in Miami, but they didn't meet while I was down there, so I missed going there. I was ready to run up to the altar and get blasted by <laughs> Apostle Maldonado. Anyway, um, he, he brings out, he's got tremendous faith, and, and a lot of miracles happen in his church and on these huge crusades he does throughout Latin America mostly. So um, I thought, well, he's an expert on this. We'll draw him into the discussion. Uh, Genesis 1.26. Then God said, let us make man in our image. Oh, you know what? I always look at the... Uh, I'm always looking at the slides. So, I am doing something creatively here. <laughs> I will face you instead of reading the book of the projector. Yay! <laughs> I want to keep my eye on you. <laughs> well, what's going on? No golden caps, okay? <laughs> Genesis 1.26. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. What does it mean that we're made in God's image? That's a really, this is one of the most powerful statements in the Bible in terms of who we are. Rick, this is, some of this is going to relate to your sermon and also my manna sermon, but it's, it's from a different angle. Um, so i just give you that tip. I didn't steal your lines or anything, but uh, they're gods, they're not mine. Hey. <laughs> Glad you said that. <laughs> um, let us make man in our image. You, are made, you and I are made in the image of God. But the image of God is not just a physical likeness. It's, it's an everything like this. God is the king. Now, we never take his place. But there is a delegation 
of his authority and who he is to us. He has put into us a desire for dominion, for kingdom building. And he has put in us a realization that we are not just natural people. We really are supernatural people. Man. We have a spiritual destiny and a spirit that inside us, who we really are, is a spirit. It is not natural. It is supernatural. You and I are created as supernatural beings. So while we're in this deathbed of a, of a body, we are now in a natural environment that is not where we're supposed to be. And inside us, our soul cries out, our spirit cries out. And really, we are looking forward to where we eventually will go. And while we're here, we're in the midst of learning, relearning, and reconnecting with that spiritual makeup, with that image of God that says you are beyond nature. And beyond nature means you have the power to take dominion over it. The real things are in the supernatural, in the spiritual realm. And the power of that realm is greater than anything in the natural realm. That's why God can materialize whatever he wants to in the natural realm. Time and space and material do not matter to him because he's supernatural. So when we call on miracles and when the gold dust comes, and I say it proudly today. Man. How can I? I thought I had stopped losing people to that, but I didn't. Some more left. <laughs> Sorry that they left, but anyway, we have to know our God. Our God is supernatural, and when you pray, you pray believing that and knowing that. It's not a matter of hope and presumption. It's a matter of knowledge that God is going to intervene, and he can do anything he wants to do. Amen. If there wasn't something on that chair now, he could materialize it. There could be a pile of gold dust and manna in just the blink of an eye. It doesn't, he does not go by the laws of nature. He created them. He is beyond them. And these things are cursed. The world and the natural world is cursed when we fell into sin through Adam. And everything, all of this creation was sin, uh, fell into sin and cursed. And that's the way God sees it. It is not eternal. It will not go with you into the next realm. The next realm is for his kingdom, for what he plans to accomplish. And we who are born again in the spirit and truth will go with him into that realm. Dominion. We take dominion over the natural when we speak it out in faith now and we say, God, do your miracle stuff. Bring the miracle power. Bring it, God. Bring it. We are speaking supernatural into the natural and it only comes through faith. Just to say something is not faith. It will not energize or open the gateway of power. We have to believe it and we have to believe it now. When we pray for someone who is sick, we don't say, I hope you get better. God, God if you feel like healing them, help them. You know, that is not faith, and that is not drawing on the power that God has already put at our disposal. So faith is the trigger. It brings the supernatural into the natural. And we take dominion over things through our faith. Yeah. Yeah. Hebrews 10, I sure hope so. 10.38. But the just shall live by faith. My righteous servant shall live by his conviction, respecting man's relationship to God and divine things. And holy fervor, I love that, <laughs> born of faith. You get holy fervor when you believe, when you believe God's going to do something. And conjoined with it, and if he draws back and shrinks in fear, God has a soul. How about that? Are we created in the image of God? He has a spirit, he has a soul, and we know Jesus had a body. That is you. All three of them are in you. My soul has no delight or pleasure in him. We say that God loves us, and it's true. We say he's kind and merciful, and it's true. And there's other aspects of God as well. He demands faith. Or he is disgusted with us. That's the same God. Because he's working on pure principles. And his pure principle says, you must believe me as if I'm standing here talking to you right now. You must believe me, or I will not honor that to you. I will not take pleasure in you. I take pleasure in you when you believe. Mm -hmm. You gain your salvation through faith, the greatest miracle of all. You gain healing through faith. You understand the word of God through faith. If you try to read the Bible without faith, you're a lost turkey. <laughs> It's not going to make any sense to you. 
It won't make sense. How could it be? Well, God has a different dimension. His dimension is a circle. His time, matter, and space are never ending. He is the I am. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He goes on forever. He was there before time. When you ask God who he is, he says, I am. That's my address. That's my identification. I don't have to define it to you. I am. But for man, in the natural world, we have a start and we have an end. We have a linear life. We have a linear perspective. So things will be born and they die. But with God, he knew you before anything ever came onto this earth, and he will put you someplace in eternity. We all want to go one place, not the other. So God is not trapped by time. And when he died on the cross, he died for our sins of all time, for every single person, from the beginning until the end. It was a one-time moment in our linear thinking, but it was an eternal thing that God did in the spirit realm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When he died on the cross, he took your sins, he took all your disease, and that means your sins that you did from the time you were little until you take uh, do until you're in that deathbed. Hallelujah. So he saw it, he knew it, and it did not stop his power from flowing and taking things away. All of the sicknesses that we laid down to him, that we released the power in our mouths and faith, it was healed on the cross before you were even born. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank yes. you, Jesus. Right. Thank you, Jesus. The just shall live by faith. And that's yes. the truth. Yes. Yes. Live by Hallelujah. faith into our salvation. Come live on, by right. faith day to day. When we right. take our manna every day, I'm living by faith. Amen. Amen. When you have a problem in your marriage, you better live by faith. You've got a problem in your work, you're living by faith. Otherwise, you come into worry, anxiety, anger, hopelessness, depression. And that doesn't belong in you because you are supernatural. Those are natural, fallen, cursed things, and they don't belong in you. And the way to wash them away is to live in the supernatural by faith. Knowing that God has not denied you, he will not forget you. Whatever problem you have raised to him, he is going to see it through. He says, I promise, I will make you something new. I will not stop until it's finished. Hallelujah. That's a supernatural revelation. You can't understand it any other way. Thank you, Jesus. This feels good on the podium up here. <laughs> Faith is the mind of the Holy Spirit. This is Maldonado's quote. I love this. Faith is the mind of the Holy Spirit revealed to man so that he might operate and have dominion in this dimension of time, space, and matter. We now can manipulate those hard and fast things that everybody else stumbles over. We don't have to die from cancer. Did you know, and I was just thinking of this the other day, not one of the original apostles, disciples, died of sickness. And Jesus too. They were either martyred for their faith or they died of old age. That is how we're supposed to be. We are not supposed to die of sickness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise you, Jesus. It is to believe that truth, which is lived out by those people, is greater than the lie of Satan that says you're sick and you're going to die. You can't believe a doctor. You can't believe the natural proclamations that you're getting from natural minds. It, you have to believe with the mind of the Holy Spirit, the powerful mind of God. That is your revelation. That's your destiny. And that's your truth. Who is the truth? Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. And who is the father of all lives? Jesus. And he lives in the natural and he corrupts us. He corrupts our minds. But Jesus is truth. And Jesus says, I have created you to live, not to die. Yeah. Romans 8, 19 to 21. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. Slash daughters. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. It is understanding your destiny, understanding your power, that the dominion comes out. And all of those accursed things, everything that fell into the curse, whether anything on earth, the material substance, the animals, the flowers, whatever, it's all corrupted by sin and the fall, and God is waiting for reclamation. He's waiting for you to take dominion over it through faith, through faith. And breaking that, that linear thinking, 
That's what, when you are trapped in a natural mind, you cannot see the gold dust. You cannot accept it. You cannot believe that there's really going to be healed. What you'll hear people say, oh, please pray for me, I'm, I'm sick. I hope I get better. And then the other person, oh, Father, you know, if it's your will, please heal this person someday at some time. <laughs> if you feel like it, if it's possible, if there's a small... You know, and Jesus rebukes, he rebukes someone who, who doubts. He's, if it's possible. And he speaks with an exclamation mark point. If it's possible. He hates doubt. He hates unbelief. And it will not activate what is already there that was on the cross that our brother Rick pointed out the other day. It is already there. Everything you need is already paid for on the cross forever. You just have to claim it by faith. Take it out. Take it out. And everything else knows this but the mind of man. All of creation waits. They know. Your dog knows. Your cat knows. Your fish knows. But do you know that you have been ordained to take dominion over the things of this realm? Satan has lied to us so much. We've gotten into the natural mind, the natural pattern. And that we've always been told, I'm sick, I'm going to die. I'm going to have this problem and this problem. No, it's broken. It's broken. The truth says the truth of God says it's broken. Hebrews 4, 7. Thank you. Again, he appoints a certain day. Today, saying through David, so long afterward, in the words already quoted, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Your faith is for today. Amen. Expect it today. Declare it today. Dog, God is not a dog. We're not commanding him to do things. What we're doing is we're activating our faith to take down what he has already given us. It's already there, just like Rick was saying. In fact, it's more than there. It's inside you. All of that power, all of the answers is inside you when you have the Holy Spirit in you and the mind of Christ. Today. Today, what do I want to see happen? Don't be lazy in your prayer life. Today is the day to pray for that thing. Today is the day to declare that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exodus 3.14 And God said to Moses, I am who I am, and what I am, and I will be what I will be. Don't tell me what to do. And he said, you shall say this to the Israelites. Can you imagine what his voice sounds like? The sound of many rushing rivers. I, I just blow you away when you hear that. Trumpets blow. Ah, I, am, I am has sent me to you. And then 2 Peter 3, 8. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. When you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you shorten time in every single way in your spiritual walk. You become closer to God than you could have been for 40 years sitting in some Baptist church someplace fiddling around with your hymnal. You can be filled right away. You can be filled with the glory of God. And all of those those little teeny piddly prayers you've been making, now you've got fire in your prayers. Amen. It shortens, it compresses time. And now people, instead of lingering on in disease for many years, they can be healed right on the spot. A demon can be cast out and all of the chains broken in one moment Amen. because you've been filled with Amen. the Holy Ghost. Yes. And Thank time you, is compressed. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. You don't have to wait around for your miracle when you can claim it. And believe it in faith. Remember, it's not just, I hope he's going to answer me. That won't get you there. He's a benevolent God, and I don't want to say absolutes, because he answers a lot of crazy prayers that I've had, even when I didn't have 100% faith. But the principle will be activated in a much stronger, immediate way when you have faith to believe it now. That's why when you cast out a demon, when you pray for sickness, it is a command. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed now. Expect it to happen now. Isaiah 46, 9 to 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, 
and from ancient times things not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will accomplish all my purpose. God is not trying to think about what he's going to do next. You see that? He is, he is the plan was initiated well before you and I came on the scene. He thinks all at once. He sees everything at the same time. He's not waiting to find out what's going to happen. You understand that? He knows before it happens. He knew you before you happened. He is. You can throw your clock away when you move into the spiritual realm. Have you ever been lost in the spirit praying or worshiping? And you, you could be doing it for hours and all of a sudden you think it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes. The time is suspended, right? On Mondays when you guys worship and you wake up and you see purple lights and you have gold dust all over, gold dust all over you and you got oil pouring down on your walls because you've been lost in the spirit. Hallelujah. And I'm, you know, last night I wanted to pray and I just kept worshiping and I didn't want to stop. So it's fun to let God take you where he wants you to take you, right? All right. And he's going to do what he said he will do. Don't worry. Don't doubt. He is not, as you said in your talk, in your sermon, Rick, uh, you know, he's not biting his fingernails wondering what's going to happen. Job 22, 28. You shall also decide and decree a thing. You see the dominion thing. Mm -hmm. And it shall be established for you. And the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. When you are a real child of God and you're walking by faith, you shall decide, I want this to happen. And I will decree it. I will declare it. I will state it as a fact in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, the, the main thing to remember here is that uh, the Lord says, seek first the kingdom of heaven. And then all good things will be uh, given unto you. So I, I am not a proponent of just, you know, God bless me with more. I'd love to have more money, and I do pray for prosperity. But I pray for it in a way that I can use it for the kingdom. Yeah. I, it's not that I need a, you know, a bigger house or a car to, for my uh, comfortable American life. <laughs> uh, what I want is I want to have money so I can fly over to Asia and I can feed some hungry children. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> And I want to see a, a firm, I want to see a church here that does not fall into the American framework. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if anybody saw Rob DeLuca's quote on Facebook. I, I put it on mine. I stole it. Oh, you stole it. Well, he, he, he hit my heart. You know, God told me to, uh, through Jennifer, do I have a mind of my own, God? Can you speak to me <laughs> so I don't have, um, to call it? She I'm said, God, you rip. She said, God, yes. More than that, actually. Um, yeah, that's, I guess. Oh. Rob DeLuca, now, I know that, what was his name? That, he's not the name you want to bring up now. But Todd Bentley really did, there was an outpouring of God. I don't believe the, you know, I know his life turned into a disaster. But uh, when there was an outpouring in, in Lakeland, um, Rob DeLuca had actually prophesied this happening. And Rob DeLuca went to Lakeland. Anyway, Rob DeLuca's a cool guy. He's been on Sid Roth, and he's got a really amazing testimony. And I listen, he used to be a drug addict living in, an, in a box in an alley. Now he owns a company. His story is just amazing. He makes $30,000 a month. He's living in New Zealand. He's got a beautiful house. He's got a wonderful ministry. He gets gold dust. And he gets diamonds, <laughs> and he gets all the oil is pouring out of his ears. You know, they've got it all over the place there. He started a church in um, Orange County, and then he has two in New Zealand. And, um, well, I've always, I just, I just love the ministry, and I, I keep listening to the podcast. And she said, God told me to contact him. I, I said, I don't think he's interested in me, you know. So, um, but I did. I contacted him when I saw that note on Facebook that talked about, pastors and evangelists who travel around taking money. They, they, they take the money and they don't give anything. And Rob said, would you guys do this for free? Would you be it? You got it? Is there gold dust? Pour it out, God. Yeah? Oh, hallelujah. I could use some more. God, put it on. Since I'm not afraid. 
All right. Amen. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Because we're happy when God blesses us. Amen. You have a supernatural mind. You can enjoy these things. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Timmy had it all over his keyboard one. He had it in his hands at a football game. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, come on, God. Pour it out. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I said, wow, that's my heart. You don't have to ask me. I'm not making a salary. If I can go and give, in fact, when I uh, invited Joshua Mills and, and Kay uh, Meyer to go to Vietnam, I said, you know, I don't know what your expectations are here, but mine are to go and give. So, you know, if people, I, I, I assume they feel the same way. I don't, but if they don't feel that way, okay, I'll go by myself. <laughs> um, but I believe they feel the same way, so that wasn't a, a thing on that. Now, Rob DeLuca is the same way. So when I saw this, something jumped in my spirit, and I remembered you told me to contact them. So I sent him a note on Facebook, and he answered me. <laughs> so he said, Bill, I'll be contacting you soon. You know, um, give me a time. I'm getting ready to go into a service, but I want to talk to you. Isn't that cool? That's so cool. Got this little church, and all of a sudden, all these people are popping into our life. But it's when you share in the same spirit, the same flow of that uh, ministry, the anointing. And, and, you know, I was just thinking, you know, I, I, I think I've confessed this already to you before. But I used to struggle with how small we were. And, you know, let's face it, we had some hard time getting started. On, I'm not going to mention specific things here. But, and I used to get mad at people. <laughs> well, that's all flesh. You know, that's all soulishness. When God, and then I just think, well, this is beautiful. You guys are beautiful. And um, thinking about, uh, let's see, three people have left the church recently, and, and one sent a note to confirm that. Uh, two sent a note to confirm. And, you know, that can really, as a pastor, it's like, you know, especially when they kind of put a stake in it. And I'm like, you know, I love you. I can feel better over here. <laughs> but when they say your gold dust is bleh, you know, and all this other stuff. So it can be kind of hard. But then when I woke up and I read that book today that the guy gave me, the, the, the man we prayed for on Friday, it was everything, speaking to me, telling me, and I, this is what I want to preach about next Sunday, so I don't want to get into it too far. But Jesus had 12 disciples. And when he left, he left a church of 120. It wasn't 10,000. And, oh, I'm, now I'm going to start to preach that sermon. Anyway, the point is, it, it made me, <laughs> it made me appreciate, you know, I do love you guys. But it just, you know, it's not that I, it wasn't ever that I didn't. It was just that I'm thinking more. But this is what God wants me to do right now. And this is, these are the people that I love and who love me. And you're the ones that have weathered the storm. You're the ones that have been here for a year or two. Most of you, and, and when we got thrown out because of the gold dust from the other church, you came on over. Yeah. When, when, we love you guys. Amen, 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 amen. And all of my goofiness, you know, running around like a maniac <laughs> doing the spin with uh, Rick Pino and blowing the trumpet <laughs> and then uh, praying uh, loudly, and you're the ones who keep going. I want my 12 disciples. Well, I want my 120. Let me see. <laughs> Let's go 120. <laughs> when we had to go, at, when we, the call was to give money to, for Vietnam, you guys gave it. Little church, and, we, and now 10 people are alive because yes. of us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. I mean, thank you, God. Hallelujah. So I love you guys. When we didn't have a worship team, you girls came together. Yes. Amen. And every Saturday. And then you tried singing with your jaw out of place. And I was wondering why you couldn't sing any louder. That's a warrior spirit, Christina. And God loves that. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. I don't need a 10,000. The, the, the guy who wrote that no, let's just say The guy who wrote the book. He became the pastor of a, um, like 10, 15,000 person church. And he said, but in my heart, I'm a pastor of, my example is Jesus Christ, and he had 12 disciples and 120. Whether you have a big church or a little one, you better have that same heart, that same desire to love people and, and have that community. Philippians 4.19. 
And my God will supply every need of you. This is a great verse. Got to memorize this. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. There's nothing you can't ask for. And everything you need, he's going to pour out. It doesn't mean you're not going to suffer. It doesn't mean there are going to be times when you might lack. But he will come through. He will come through. Yet there are times you are exhausted emotionally and physically. And you would come in here and the Holy Spirit would, would lift you up. I could see it on your face. You'd smell fragrance. Do you still smell the fragrance? Fragrance? Hallelujah. And the oil, I felt it pouring on my hand. And you said you felt it coming on your head. Because God knows. He knows your struggles. He knows your persistence. He knows your heart. He knows how much you love your family. He knows that you came here with a smile on your face no matter how tired and worn out. And I remember, I told this story before, but you and Mal up in the front row. And nobody's in the church that weekend. I'm like, oh, I want to quit. And then you said, we're here. <laughs> and we can't wait to you. Glory to God. <laughs> You're here and I'm halfway here. <laughs> Amen. And there's a picture of you that we have, uh, I think it's on my Facebook, but it's in the old church. And there's like this, when we were, those pictures were taken, there's like this glow all over. And it's all over you. And Jennifer was praying for you. And the glory of God's just all over. I love that picture. That's a great picture. Anyway, Romans 12, 3. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Well, the first part of this reminds me that all of my faith is in him, not in me. So everything I'm claiming, it's on the cross, it's on Jesus. And when I command sickness out or demons out or whatever it is, I'm declaring it in the name of Jesus Christ, not to my own glory. And now we go down to the other part. Each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Some of us worry about the amount of faith we have. Well, I have a different level of faith than what you have because God gave it to you. It wasn't something you generated. In fact, the word says that you can't even come to Christ. You can't even believe in him without the faith that God gives you to believe. It doesn't come from you. Faith is not naturally generated. It's supernaturally provided. You don't earn it. You get it. And therefore, wherever you're at right now, the amount of faith you start with that God gives you is a gift to you. Now, there's a change here, though. Because that faith will grow when you test it and stretch it. You might start out with a one-talent faith, but you have a desire to go to two, and you start to believe God for more than what your faith is has already been assigned to you, and all of a sudden you're going to start to see two level miracles. And now that's how you start to stretch into a higher level of faith. That's why some people start out with a higher level of faith, but you have a desire in your heart to see more, and all of a sudden that starts to stretch and your faith starts to grow, and now you start to believe in one of them that left got her, hearing, her ear here healed. Deafness healed. You know, maybe I didn't have that sheep, but God gave me a real gift to see that ear healed. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we all have our task, our place. Stretch it. You have to want it. You have to want to see more. You have to want to see more. You have to believe. I want my supernatural mind completely open. I want to see the glory of God fall down. There are some things I don't quite have enough faith for. I will admit that. But I have more faith now than I used to. And I wouldn't be surprised that even the highest level of my asking, it will be granted. Because I believe I'm on a progressive uh, slope going up to receive more and more and more. I want to see more and more and more. But you have to want to. If you're happy with what you've seen in the past, if you're happy with what you have now, there's no stretching, there's no growing. Okay. Now, why do we not have more faith? There are two main obstacles here. One is unbelief, and the other is human reasoning. 
Hebrews 3.12 Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. Do you see God calls unbelief evil? It is a spirit. Unbelief is a spirit. If you let it get a hold of you, you won't believe anything anymore. And the more you let that spirit grip you, the less you're going to believe God for your miracles. And the less that's going to happen. Your faith will start to shrink. And you let a spirit of the devil dominate your thinking. We have to cast it out. It's like casting out any other demon. In the name of Jesus Christ, unbelief, go! And you know, sometimes when I'm praying and I feel the devil just, you know, somebody's sick or they have a big problem... And I'm ready to go, and I can feel the power of God. All of a sudden, a thought will go through my head. Well, maybe they're not going to get healed. Get out, Satan. In the name of Jesus, go. Don't entertain that thought. And don't let other people around you, because they have that spirit. And they're going to start to push that on you. No, that's not really gold dust. I think you're just sweating. That's not really oil. <laughs> Looks like oil to me. <laughs> You know, I would. I was just, uh, when I was doing this the other day, I was thinking, you know, I couldn't make a mistake. Could I? In believing God for more than what I should. Is that possible? Is it better to make a mistake and believe God for more than to make a mistake and believe God for less and doubt? I'm going to take more. I'm going to believe more. I'm going to trust Him more. The other day at, at Hank's house, last week, I, we found... We were downstairs, you and Hank, Hank and Mal and I were there after the movie. And um, I saw, I'm, look, we're looking, I'm thinking, God, where are the jewels? Where are the, the <laughs> I want to see them because I feel your presence. And I look down at Mal's foot and all of a sudden I see a shiny, sparkly thing. I said, oh, that's a diamond. <laughs> all right, so we pick it up and it looks like a diamond, but on the back, it looks like there's a covering on it, yeah. you know? So I'm thinking, well, it, <laughs> doesn't really look real because it's got that backing. But I didn't see it before. That's what I don't understand. I know I was looking there, and I didn't see it until I was having that thought about the jewel. So, okay, do I know for sure that he put it there? I'm going to believe he put it there. I don't want to cause anybody to stumble, stumble because maybe it's not. But this is just an example. Uh, we've seen other things that we absolutely know for sure. This is in a high, you know, in a nebulous category. But the, the point is, I would rather make the mistake of believing God gave me that thing than the doubt that he did, and he actually did. Huh? What, honey? She had a lot of good as well worship on Monday. Yeah. From her hand and her arm. Amen. Covered with the goddess. Amen. The both of us, we covered the goddess even between the fingers. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Is that right? Yes. Amen. 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 Because you believe, you have a, the, the spiritual eyes, you have spiritual discernment. You hunger for the things of the Spirit, so He gives you more. Amen. 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 Human reason. Hebrews 11.3 By faith we understand that the universe was created by the Word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. All of this made from an invisible world. Because that's why science can't explain things. They can't explain the root of things. They can't, they can't explain eternity. They have this strange idea about the Big Bang. They don't really know, you know what happened before it or what caused it. They cannot give you that because they're limited to linear thinking. They're studying within that box where God is way outside. He's way outside. You can't rationalize this, man. When someone said, I want to talk to you about the gold dust because it's troubling me, can I meet with you on Saturday? I said, respectfully, no. <laughs> I said, you either believe it or you don't. And, what, and, they, and he said, well, scripturally, you know, I wonder if this is accurate. And my answer to these people is, show me in the Bible where it says God cannot manifest gold. It's better to say what he can't do. If he's doing something to glorify his name in the middle of a worship, period, or, or when the gospel is being preached, that should answer your question. Don't tell me what he can't do. The Bible doesn't tell me he can't do anything. It says what's impossible for man is possible with God. So why am I going to argue with you, brother? Supernatural, spiritually discerned. John 14, 6. 
Thank you. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The truth lies in Jesus Christ. You will never get to the answer, the absolute solid, grounded answer without him. John 14, 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Thank you, Rick. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible is filled with unreasonable, strange things. For somebody to doubt and question the manifestation of golden manna is absurd if you believe the Bible. A donkey talked to the prophet. The dead were raised. The tombstone was rolled away. There was a tree of life. There was a garden of Eden. Guarded by a flaming sword that flashes back and forth. Nothing strange about that, right? Gold coin in a fish. Gold coin in a fish, amen. A man in a fish. Hallelujah. Glory. Woo! Iron floated. Iron floated, hallelujah. Give me some more. The sea Amen, the sea part. The sun stopped. Oh, come on. The walls fell down when they worshipped. I feel the Holy Ghost on that. Uh, you're in the wrong building. Dude, are you sure you're a Christian? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Romans 117. For in the gospel a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed through the way of faith that arouses to more faith. As it is written, the man who through faith is just and upright shall live and shall live by faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's greater and greater and greater, and it's moving, and I'm getting more faith as I'm talking, and I'm hearing your Hallelujah. stories. <laughs> when I hear the testimonies, the testimonies are a faith stretcher. That's why you must tell them. You must tell them how God moved in your life. And tell us when it's Sunday, and I say, is there a testimony? Please let your little feet, your little blessed feet come up. And share that faith stretcher with us so my faith can grow. Yes. I want it to be as big as it can be. Yes. And you're going to help me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, I have seen this so consistently. When that first call on my heart said, there's more than just the Bible church. There's more than just what I'm reading in the Bible that is given to me in these sermons when before I was charismatic. I knew that if God said they're speaking in tongues, then they're speaking in tongues. I don't care if the pastor's telling me it's not true. I knew that there would be supernatural miracles because other than that, he's not God. So I And I believe the Bible in the Bible church, which was heresy. <laughs> so I left the Bible church because they told me you can't speak in tongues or pray for miracles here, even though we wanted you to be a leader in our church. Quick change. <laughs> when you believe the Bible, they kick you out of the Bible church. Okay. <laughs> well, I would rather believe the Bible than the Bible church. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I want my faith to grow. And it started because I would not let them suppress what the Word of God said. That the Holy Spirit spoke a little bit in my heart to say there's a lot more, brother. Just keep going. And the first thing is, of course, your salvation and that miracle shifts. And then the next thing is, you start to pray maybe for people. And you see things happen. And God starts to do it. I was seeing miracles before I was spiritual. That's true. But not the same. I just knew his hand was working in my life. I could see it very clearly. But when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, and I started to speak in tongues, and we started to pray for people, and they got healed. And then the next level came. Well, then people fell in the spirit. That was the next thing when I prayed for people. And then after that, I was getting prophetic words that were all true. And then after that, I saw demons being cast out. And then after that, I, you know, working with the youth. And then after that, the church here. And then we see the gold dust. And then I saw the oil. 
And then we saw the gems. Do you see? Stretch the faith because there's so many great and amazing things God wants to do. Just let it come. Don't fight it. Believe more than doubt. You have no reason to doubt. There's no benefit to doubt. All the benefits come from faith. You have nothing to lose. And that's what I was thinking about the, the man with cancer. Dude, what do you have to lose? Just believe it, man. Believe it. Believe you're going to wake up tomorrow and those cancer cells are going to be dead. Do you want to... You're, gonna, you're dying and you're doubting? What good is that going to do? I didn't say it to him that way, but that's what I was thinking. Believe you are healed. Believe you receive. And then this brings us up to the final moment here where I involve us into the process of believing now for what we need. So we want to pray. Because I know right now you're believing more maybe than when we even started. Or maybe your faith has been shined up and polished while we're thinking about this. Thinking about the glory of God. Think about what he's already done in your life. But that's for yesterday. It's a step up the mountain of faith. So now I know you know what he's done in your life, JJ. Hallelujah. Praise God. And you know what, man? The good things that have happened in your life is just the beginning. Think about that. And don't get stagnant. Because when you stop stretching and believing, not only do you kind of level up, start to go backwards. Keep it moving. We are to be active, dynamic people. We are to grow. We were made to grow. We were made to grow in the spirit. We were made to take dominion is achieved through one victory here and one victory there. That's how battles are won. And that's the way you need to fight your life race. Always progressing to a higher level in Christ. Your body might be getting older, but you're not supposed to die of disease. So my faith, I want my faith to take me in the old age. That I can die an old man who preaches the gospel, who can give to the poor, take care of the sick, all the way up. When you're in the nursing home, lay hands on the rubber. The hunters were going around praying for people in the nursing home. <laughs> Why not? Hallelujah. Doesn't mean you're not going to die, but die the right way. Yes. Or maybe you're in Bangladesh on a bus and the Muslims are going to stop you. That's okay. As you're dying for the glory of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't test it. You don't put that to <laughs> test. But if you're going over there to serve the Lord and something happens, you died the way God intended it. Not the way the devil intended it, but the way you made a statement, a witness. So now, we're going to come against unbelief. And that's what this prayer is about. Because even though we're believing, there's sometimes there's still lingering unbelief. It's the old natural mind. That, remember the Bible says in Romans, renewing of the mind. Renew your mind means to make it spiritual, not natural. So whenever people come against us and they bring up natural things to describe the Bible or what we see happening here, it's an effort by Satan to stop the flow of our faith because you become more and more dangerous as your faith increases. The devil can't contend with you because he knows that you're going to be tapping into more and more of God's power and more and more dominions coming. So he wants to stop you. And he's already defeated. So all he can do is try to convince you that what is true is not true. So he's going to try to get you to believe that the miracles don't happen or it can't happen or you've just got lucky this time. And there's no such thing as luck. Amen. So believe now for your miracle. And I say that with a caveat that put the things of heaven first, the kingdom of God first, and then all good things. It's okay. If you have a financial problem, believe God to heal that. That's okay. He did not create you to be in poverty. Persistent poverty. If you have any kind of physical problem, problems with depression, addiction, or temptations that are running amok, or worry, stress, fear, anger, whatever it is. Now is the time to come against that. Because what keeps us in bondage often is the doubt that God is freeing us. But what did Isaiah 61 say? Jesus came to set the captives free. That's his mission. And to put, the, uh, not in 61, but he talks about it later, that Jesus' mission is to destroy the works of the devil. He is God, King of kings, Lord of lords. All his power is greater than anything the devil can throw at you. But you have to believe. And don't fear that you're going to slide back. 
I'm afraid, I, got, I think I got over it a little bit now, but I'm not too sure how firmly. So now that fear is a doubt that the devil wants you to think, oh, you're not going to get better. You're not going to get better. That's what we're rebuking today. Get out of here. Get out of my mind. I know what God said to me. And I know I'm a son. I'm a daughter of God. I know that all that supernatural power is just wait. It's already there for me. I just need to take it. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. I'm going to turn the light out so we can concentrate. Now, let's just believe each other for each other. While we're climbing our own stuff. Think about, now, the other thing is, now, Pastor Maldonado, he's a, a really interesting. But he will say, and his theory is, it's not his theory, it's proven by his own experience. Declare a moment in time when you expect that thing to happen. So, and then maybe when you go home tonight, write it down. Write down exactly, you have to be specific. And Young, Young E. Cho also has a great story about this. I don't want to put, pull that in. Yeah. But be specific and certain that you're going to receive it. Um, Moldonado bought a house with a 30-year mortgage. And uh, he felt the Lord, now here's another thing. If you get a rhema word, which is a word from God, there's immediate power in that. So if you feel God telling you something today, right now, that you believe there's a peace in your heart, there's a certainty that comes on you for something, that's a word from the Lord. That will come to pass. Amen. And you can speak that out and it'll happen. You might have it for somebody else. Maybe we'll get a word for each other today. But that rhema word is a power word and it comes from God and it can't, it's a promise. It's written in stone. You can't, it can't be taken from it. Amen. You got one? Yeah. So this Thursday, I'm going to be going to court for um, reckless skiing, and um, I already went to jail for it. Uh, I spent two nights and three days at jail, wondering what I'm doing with my life. And when I came out, I knew I needed something. My mom definitely told me that I needed to start going to church. And I didn't see it like that. I was like very doubtful. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Then I started coming back. And every time I come back to here, it just feels so much better. I'm not afraid of going because I know that God's got me in his hands. Amen. 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 Testimony is going to break chains, brother. Amen. JJ, yes. seriously, you, <laughs> your testimony will destroy the works of the devil. You got friends in the same situation or near that. All you got to do <laughs> is let that testimony fly. That's what they need to hear because you know they're hopeless. They feel like, how am I going to? They don't say it, maybe, but they're kind of trapped looking for God in other things, you know, drugs and sex and all of that other stuff. And it's not filling them up. Inside, they're lonely, they're miserable, they're angry. Never sound. But you have a testimony for God. And then you're giving them hope. Yes, oh. mm -hmm. oh, yeah. yes ma'am. I have, um, um, well, today, yes. I shared this with JJ earlier. I said, JJ, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this morning, um, I was going to go to a, another Bible church, you know, with, with Pammy, but because my husband has to go to work. And then I say, you know, maybe not. I'll stay. I'll stay home because since I'm coming to ICF, this is my, you know, my main church anyway. But, you know, for Pammy, we can watch, you know, past, this pastor on, on TV, Pastor Joel Osteen and his message. And I listened to his message. It was about faith. <laughs> and Another sermon comes around. It was about faith also, having the faith, faith. Um, it was um, Pastor uh, Charles Stanley. And now, Pastor Bill, faith. Hallelujah. The dynamite faith. So that, Actually, I took that term out, but I had it in there. Dynamite. Oh, okay. No, seriously, yeah, dynamite. And I, was, I shared this with JJ. I said, JJ, you know, I, you, because I was afraid. Okay. I was afraid for him this coming Thursday. Because, you know, with a reckless 103,
that's jail time. Well, they're going to take five years. And I was like, no, I think, you know, by faith, I, yes, I declare, yes, yes, I declare by yes, faith amen. that there's yes, no fear. Right. There's no, yes. mo no fear that, you know, the, the yes. Lord will be in there with us yes. in that yes. chamber. Just like what he did yes. the last time that JJ got out, yes. it, was, it was dismissed yes. because he was charged with you know, different things. But, you know, that the, God's mercy is, is yes. here and his love and yes. our faith, that, that I have to have faith. Yes. It was like, it was God speaking into my heart that have faith. Hallelujah. And that, you know, there's no fear. There's Amen. no fear. Amen. Yes. You know, actually, I was going to define that dynamite where it came from, but I, I just, for brevity, it's funny you said that. I left it here, but I was, I was going to speak about it before because it's that, ex, it, it's the explosive faith. That's the, it, the faith that we're talking about breaks the rocks. It breaks the, the bondage off of our minds. It blows it off so that we can believe and claim the, the Rima word. That's a Rima word that you have, I believe. Amen. Thank you. We're going to all of us lay him on JJ yeah. today. And all of us. Yeah, if anybody has, in addition to that, if anybody has any other sig really significant things, let's let's uh, all pray for that person yeah. today. But right now, let's pray for ourselves, and then when we're done, then we'll do the group yes. prayer on that. All right, so uh, let's pray it out loud. You know, you can either follow me or just do it at your own pace, but pray this out loud. Oh, let's do it together. Um, <clears throat> yeah, why don't we stand up? Thank you. Faith and now. Hallelujah. Uh, just let me. Uh, Holy Spirit, we pray your power right now. We're taking your word and we're declaring that as promises in our lives. God, we are trusting you now. And Lord, we're asking you right now, stretch our faith. Stretch it to grow, God. We're believing. We're believing everything you've said. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Now let's start. Lord, Lord I open my heart. I open my heart so you can fill it, so you can can fill it. with your dynamite faith. With your dynamite faith. Destroy, in me Destroy in me all doubt, all doubt. Unbelief. Unbelief. unbelief, reasoning, reasoning. And, argumentation. and argumentation, so that I may receive. So that I may receive. I may receive the miracles you promised me. I may receive the miracles you promised me. And so that I, and so that I may, give may give to others the faith, the faith, 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 faith you have, you you have imparted, imparted into my life. Into my life. Hallelujah! Give it a date, give it a date, it's gonna happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Hallelujah. they want some music.